Hello, how are you? Did you just hear what Netanyahu, of course, if you don't know it, I think he's Prime Minister of Israel, head honcho of Israel, just said. I almost flipped over. If you haven't heard it, and he said it on Wednesday, the 25th, I put a, a link on the bottom so you can actually listen to it. Made me flip. Why? Because, oh, oh, I, let me talk about it. I guess at the same time, it must have been last night, I don't know, October 25th, Christian Post, okay, Christian Post, wrote about it. Netanyahu defeating Hamas will make prophecy of Isaiah a reality. Probably should be reading that too, if you're reading it with an open mind. Why? Very simple. And I think they have the speech on there as well. So you should listen to it. He's talking about, number one, first he talked about the light, children, the people of the light and the people of the darkness. Of course, he's referring Israel as the people of the light and Hamas or the allies or whatever, Muslims, right, Iran, as people of the darkness. And then he refers to Isaiah. In other words, he makes a connection with the Bible. Now, I don't know where you can find that. See, I always want to find where are these things in the Bible. People of the light or people of the darkness. And people we know um, who Jesus spoke of as people of the light, right? And people of the darkness. Of course, he spoke of the Pharisees as the people of the darkness. And the people of the light are those that are following Messiah, right? We know that. I mean, every Christian should know that. And Netanyahu has the nerve to misuse and misquote Jesus. Of course, he can assume that if he wants, everybody can have their own opinion. But the fact that he used that word, people of the light, that Jesus already used for, you know, his followers, the bride, it's kind of strange, and then goes into Isaiah, okay, into Isaiah, and says, Well, he even says, we are people of the light, they are people of the darkness, and light shall triumph over darkness. Very important to say, right? Let's add that too, because that's what he also says. Will they really triumph over whoever they want to triumph over? Or will this lead into the Third World War and the Armageddon or Armageddon War, in which Israel is not coming out on top? He's also referring to something else. He was saying, We shall realize the prophecy of Isaiah. And then he quote, or he then he says, they will no longer be stealing at your borders, and your gates will be of glory, will be of glory. 
And then he continues to say, together we will fight, together we will win. In other words, he is the one, and he said that, that he is the one, he's the agent, he is the, he is the salvation, or he is the one that brings this salvation. He will bring this uh, millennium, okay, millennium. He is actually talking as Messiah. He is putting, proclaiming himself as Messiah. Things that only Messiah can do, right? Making the Jews or whoever, Judah or whoever sit in peace, actually the whole world sit in peace. And the Holy Land, Jerusalem being safe which Isaiah says constantly, because that's what he is referring to. He's referring to, in this way, to Isaiah. I think he said that too, okay? Supposed to be in Isaiah, and I'm looking it up, and I'm looking it up, and I can't find anything. Now, this um, Christian, whatever it is, um, article here, he th they're thinking he is referring to Isaiah 60, 18. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Devastation or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. People! If you don't understand that this verse right there refers to the millennium and Jesus himself, the Messiah, being here. Christians, people, if Christians don't understand that, and nothing is said in this article by this, what is it again? Christian something. I need to go up again. Christian post. That's what it's called, Christian post. By this Christian post, nobody is questioning what he said. Did anybody do some research? You know what? I actually put... In um, Stealing at the Borders and Isaiah. I actually put that in. This is what came out. Oh, this is really interesting. This is what came out. I put in, let's see. I put in there will be no longer stealing. And then Isaiah. This is what came up. Is he talking about this verse? 33, look, you people make war and steal things from people. And those people never stole anything from you. You turn against people and those people never turn against you. So when you stop stealing, other people will begin stealing from you. Is that what he's talking about? Is that what he is talking about? I'd like to know. I'd like to know. Is there anything else that I found under this? I think 6018 um, is somebody, um, that's that verse with the violence, right? That some people thought that's what he was talking about. There will be no more violence, you know, in in your country. But people, the violence is in the country because they were stealing. That's why. Exactly what Isaiah said in 33. There is stealing because they stole first. And that violence is not going to change even if they attack everybody else. There's going to be an enemy who is remembering what Israel has done. And I'm not talking about the Jewish people at all. I think the Jewish people, most of the Jewish people are innocent. They are only following uh, bad tyrants. And I'm going to use the word the way it is. That are misleading them. Isaiah 61, 8. I, the Lord, love 
justice. I hate stealing and everything that is wrong. I will be fair and give my people what they should have. Now listen to this. He will be fair and give people what they should have. But when you're stealing, should he give you anything? I've not found anything else about anything else about stealing in Isaiah. I wonder if people actually make or do a study. I don't know if people actually do a study. Matter of fact, this is the biggest one that came out. Look, you people make war and steal things from people. And those people never stole anything from you. You turn against people and these people never turn against you. So when you stop stealing, other people will begin to steal from you. There's always going to be somebody who will know what you have done. If you think you can defeat and I'm talking now I'm, I'm talking now to Netanyahu. Netanyahu thinks he can defeat Hamas and people in Lebanon and Syria and Iran. There's going to be a lot more people in this world that will remember they will remember what the government of Israel did. And I'm not saying the Jewish people cuz the Jewish people are being misled. This is being this is what Netanyahu he is misleading the people. 80% of the people don't even know the Bible. You think they're going to look up and 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 check, "Oh, what is he actually talking about? What verse did he use?" Oh no, they're going to just trust him and I'm not even sure about their their orthodox leaders. If they're going to look up, oh, what kind of verse did he actually use for this? Did he use 33 that says Israel is the one stealing and other people steal back because they were stealing? Or is it um I say a 68018 There will be no more violence in your country. It will not be ruined by or destroyed. You will name walls salvation, and you will name your gates praise. Is that the one he was choosing? Like this Christian paper said. I'll tell you right now. If he did use that one, that has to do nothing but with uh, uh, about the millennium. And that in Yahoo will be destroyed by that time. He will not make it in the millennium. The beast will not make it in the millennium. The beast will be destroyed and everything about the beast and Israel is part of the beast system. Period. Some people even think it is the beast. No, they're just part of it. Babylon the Great is the Vatican. The Vatican right now is supporting Israel because Israel is doing their dirty work. That's why. Because right under the Vatican, they have to have the money people lined up, and the mining people, of course, support Israel. That's where they get the it's it's their cash cow. Or actually, it's they're just using them to have a cash cow. Cuz oil, oil, oil is the is the money. of the rich and that's the only way you can motivate them. It's the only way you can motivate them. People you need to wake up. You need to wake up. Wow, this was really a speech. And then what is he doing? He's calling for the Jewish people to be slaughtered. To fight in a war that they cannot win and will not win. to fight a war where they actually going to be slaughtered please again i have said it so many times you want to read something read sakhaya is it sakhaya sakhaya sorry i always get it confused with the german use i mean read sakhaya 14 sakhaya 14 let me go there 
And believe me, it is not. Okay, Zechariah 14. Uh, I need to do it again. I don't know why it doesn't want to do what I tell it to do. Oh, I know why. <laughs> okay, and then I have my German... Here is what Zechariah, Zechariah, sorry, Zechariah says. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. Okay, this is talking about the day of the Lord. This is talking about the millennium. Not one day, a thousand years. Now listen to this, and your spoil will be divided in your midst. Why? Because they are attacked. For I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem, and the, and the city shall be taken. The city shall be taken. The houses rifled or whatever, destroyed or whatever. And the women ravished, half of the city shall go into captivity. But the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. The remnant. Okay? So the people that are left over. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. People. But before, Jerusalem will be destroyed. Okay? You'll be taken in. Then the Lord, whatever is left over, will fight. And again, they will also die there. As he fights in the days of battle. Okay? And that day his feet shall stand on Mount Olives, which faces Jerusalem. And the mountain of Olives will split in two. There will be a great earthquake, okay? And the people will flee through that valley. And then it says, Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with him. It will be terrible. There will be no light that day. It will be terrible. This will be the end of the Armageddon War. Israel will not be spared at that time. The blood will be flowing. Let's go to Revelation 14. Sorry, but my thing is very slow. And it's at the end. Reaping the grapes of wrath. 18. So that's Revelation 14, 18. And another angel came out from the altar who had power over, uh, over fire. And he cried out a lot with a loud and he with a loud cry. To him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Trust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Of the earth. Why the earth? Because they are in the wrath of God at that point. The bride has been taken out. It's in the heavens. And God is destroying the ungodly. Everybody who has not accepted Jesus as Messiah. At this point, Israel has not accepted Jesus as Messiah. And they will not. They will see him in the sky and they will scream Hosanna in the highest. Some of them. After over half of their people are dead or even more. A little remnant who is left over will see him and finally realize what they have done. So the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the wine. No, it's gathered the vine 
of the earth, threw it into the great uh, wine press of the wrath of God. And the wine press was trampled outside the city. That's Jerusalem. And blood came out of the wine press up to the horses, horses' bridles for 1,600 furlongs, whatever that is. I don't know how many kilometers. That's 184 kilometers. And don't think that God is going to spare Jerusalem. No, he is not going in this battle. This is not Gog and Magog battle. This is the battle before he established. If you continue to read in Zechariah 14, then Jesus will start his millennium, his reign and you will see that he will reign in Jerusalem. But this is something that's going to happen. And people need to understand that, especially those people that call themselves Christians. So they stay out of this conflict. I mean, Israel is not the children of light. They're not. The children of light are the children that accept Messiah. That accept God's plan. Not the Pharisees' plan or whoever put him, themselves into the, 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 the position of the Pharisees like the Zionists. These are Zionists, okay? And I'm going to use the word Zionists. They believe in a greater Israel. And it has nothing to do with prophecy. They want to force prophecy. And they want to force a false prophecy. A prophecy they have interpret. You see, I mean, you see this very clearly, what Netanyahu was doing. Did he, was he aware of it? No, he was using probably somebody else's a, a, a speech right here. And that other pe person know exactly how to trigger people. Oh, we are children of light. No, we are, they are not children of light. Children of light follow God. They are all children of darkness. Every, every one of them over there. Okay? They can't point the finger at Hamas or anybody else and say they are children of darkness because they're the same from the same father of lies. And Jesus said, the father of lies is who? Satan. And he told the Pharisees, you are children of the father of lies. That's what he told them. Why? Because they misquoted things. They misquoted things and they, they misinterpret Torah. That's why. For their benefit. And this is exactly happening the same thing. And if Jesus would be here, he would say it. He would point it out and he'd say, you are children of the father of lies and the father of lies is Satan. He would point it out. And what are we doing? Are we pointing it out? Is this, what is it called? Um... Let's see if I can go back again. I don't know if I can find it again. Oh, I would have to go back really far. Let's see one more. Nah, don't get it again. Anyways, um, yeah, this Christian, Christian magazine. Unbelievable. Really unbelievable. Um, let's see, maybe if I can find it. Yeah, there it is. Sorry, it took me a long time to get this thing. The Christian Post. That's what it is. I have no idea where uh, Christian Post world. Don't know who in the world um, is putting it out. John Heggy. Well, yeah, forget it. Anyways, I will put... I will put the link on the bottom so you can watch um, this speech by Netanyahu. Unbelievable. Uh, I may just link this article. 
and I'm not following the, these, this post. Okay, I found it because I was doing some research. And again, they had this speech on there. Unbelievable. I still think it is absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. That's the only thing you can do nowadays. This is going to lead, if they continue like this, is going to lead to the Third World War. And Third World War is the end, people. The Armageddon War is the final battle of the Third World War. Okay, You know I have to say that over and over again. And it's not the Gogon Magog War. Okay, Gogon Magog War, Jesus will intervene. Because it's his city. Okay, Jerusalem is not his city right now. The city that God is creating or Jesus is creating right now is the new Jerusalem. It's not the old Jerusalem. Because the people are not following him. You know, and if I had suggest, I would suggest you'd read Isaiah because I've been reading quite a lot um, in Isaiah lately where God is totally going and coming down on Israel or Judah, whatever. Isaiah, that was during Isaiah's time. And he has not changed his mind about Judah. He has not changed his mind. When people are false and wrong, just like you said, what I read in, um, who was it again? 60? Yeah, I think it was 60. No, it was, mine was uh, 33, I think. 33, that's what I um, read. Anyways, do your own study and, and, and stop letting you be uh, misled. Talk to you later. Bye.